April 1984, a fire engulfed the Doyle family home in Rakesi, in Glasgow's East End. The tragedy would lead to one of the highest profile miscarriages of justice in Scottish legal history. What happened was somebody went up to the, I think it was the third floor flat, and they poured petrol or some sort of accelerant onto the doorstep of the flat. They also poured it through the letterbox, and then they set fire to the whole thing. Six members of the Doyle family died when fire engulfed their top floor flat in Bank End Street, Rochese. This was a mass murder that shocked the nation. It was bad. It was quite bad, because a couple of neighbours tried to get in, couldn't get in. At the time it happened, there was too much a place. And what brought that horror to this busy and crowded family home was the simple fact that young Andrew Doyle drove an ice cream van for Marchetti Brothers. Rival ice cream firms were battling for dominance of the city's lucrative East End schemes and neighbourhoods. Became notorious as the ice cream was, and caught in the crossfire was the Doyle family. If it was a good route, you could have two, maybe three van drivers trying to claim it as his or her own. Like a watch, it's what I grew. Vendors were fiercely territorial and often got into altercations. One of the main vendors was 50 Ices, who hired vans to Thomas T.C. Campbell. 18-year-old Andrew Doyle, known as Fat Boy, worked for the Marchettis, and his route was in direct competition to T.C. Campbell's business. Before the fire which killed him and his family, Doyle had been the victim of intimidation. One of the things was he was, he was attacked, and that was in his own close. The windscreen of his van was shot out by a shotgun, and then the third was the fire. The police were under incredible pressure from the public and politicians in order to get arrests. Thomas Campbell and another suspect, Joe Steele, were arrested for the Doyle murders. In Thomas Campbell's case, there was three pillars to, to the evidence against him. One was the evidence of William Love. William Love was a local man who had told police he'd overheard Campbell and Steele in a local pub say they were going to burn Fat Boy's door. The second bit was um, a map that was found in his house in which Bank End Street, which was the, the scene of the fire, was circled. The third bit of evidence um, used against Thomas Campbell was an alleged statement after caution when he was arrested at home. Uh, in which he was reported as saying, I only wanted the van windy shot out. The fire at Fat Boys was a frightener which went too far. Joe Steele was also alleged to have made incriminating comments to the police. The first one was, I thought you'd have been here before now. And the second one was, I'm no the one that lit the match. Two men have been sentenced to life imprisonment for murdering a family of six in what became known as Glasgow's ice cream war. Campbell and Steele protested their innocence and campaigned tirelessly for their release. They weren't perfect. They weren't angels, and they admitted that themselves. But they weren't what they were painted. After nine years and one failed appeal, they were no closer to release. In 1993, Campbell started making a video diary that he released to the press. A serious miscarriage of justice has been committed and in order to hide it, it has become necessary to commit a new offence every day against sound sense and equity. From the condemnation of an innocent man flows the acquittal of a guilty man, Emil Zola. This wasn't the only form of protest. Over the years, Campbell wrote letters to MPs and staged a series of hunger strikes. Joseph Steele's way of drawing attention to the case was to become the papillon of the Scottish prison system. 
In 1993, Joe Steele staged a series of escapes from prison, including climbing up a surveillance tower outside Barlinney in Glasgow. Are you going to come down or what are you going to do? You stay up there for as long as it takes. Okay. Now we done that petition and there was only two people refused to sign it and one was a taxi that Joseph had bumped and didn't pay. The guy says, no, he owes me seven quid, I'm not paying it, I'm not signing this petition. Another one was a, a prison warden's wife and she says, no, I can't sign that. Two people, 83,000 refused to sign it. And the fact that both men continually maintained their innocence uh, went a long way in changing a, a, you know, a lot of perceptions about these guys. At the very beginning, everybody in the schemes, Dr Casey, Easter House, at you, Tommy Campbell, and you, Joe Steele, knew they were innocent. And they should be given a chance to prove it now. In 1996, new evidence came to light and they got their chance to take their case to appeal. A man convicted 12 years ago for murdering six members of the same family during an outbreak of gangland violence in Glasgow has been freed on bail pending an appeal. During the murder trial, William Love gave damning evidence against Campbell and Steele. Love now says he lied, a claim central to the men's appeal. Thomas Campbell has been growing old in prison. More than 12 years so far for a horrific crime he's always said he didn't commit. Last week, Joe Steele was released on bail after his lawyers secured a sworn statement from William Love, the witness who now says he fabricated his evidence against the two men. They'll tell appeal judges that had the jury known what the prosecution did about Love, it would have cleared Campbell and Steele. He admitted that he didn't hear any conversation whatsoever and he signed affidavits to, to that effect. He said that he, he did it in return uh, for uh, getting off on an armed robbery charge. With William Love now claiming he'd lied, many believed Campbell and Steele would win the appeal and were on the verge of securing justice. A Glasgow homecoming for Thomas Campbell. His supporters say their campaign will go on until his murder conviction is overturned. Thomas Campbell and Joseph Steele will be back at court here next year for their full appeal hearings. They believe they'll be able to show they were victims of a huge miscarriage of justice. 14 months later, the appeal hearing began. Thomas Campbell and Joseph Steele arrived at the Court of Criminal Appeal this morning for the decision which would end 13 years of campaigning. Both men were confident. But it could be all over today. It could well be, yes, and I'm hopeful that it will be. Friends, family and supporters were confident. They gathered at the courthouse to await the verdict. Lord Cullen gave their majority decision. In the light of the views which I have expressed, the appeals should, in my opinion, be refused. Outside the court, additional police officers were drafted in to keep control. They know he's innocent. They know. Do you know what I mean? What are they want? What are they trying to date him? And I know my Joe didn't date. I know he didn't date. It was in the house with me. Joe Steele and Thomas Campbell have kept up a spirited campaign protesting their innocence. But after today's ruling, they're back in prison, having exhausted every avenue of appeal. The Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission, which was set up to investigate possible miscarriages of justice, took on Campbell and Steele's case and in 2001 referred it back to appeal. They had examined the case, they had felt that there was a miscarriage of justice here, so that, that added weight to the legal argument. It took almost an hour before the two men were allowed to walk from the court with their families both will be able to spend Christmas for the first time with children born since they were sent back to jail after the failure of their last appeal. It's the best day of my life. I've been with I've been fine all along now. Campbell and Steele have eight weeks to present the grounds for their appeal. But it's already clear that they'll include the view of the Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission that the credibility of police officers at the original 1984 trial remains a significant issue. The third appeal would be their last chance to prove their innocence, and T.C. Campbell sought out new legal counsel. Tommy came to see me in my office, and I remember when the first time he walked in, I was a young lawyer, literally at the start of my career. And um, I thought, oh my God, that's Tommy Campbell, a famous Tommy Campbell. Um, and then my boss called me in and said, um, Tommy Campbell wants you to represent him. So I was like blown away. Um, 
And of course, we took the case on. A linguistics expert was brought in to re-examine the existing evidence. In particular, statements police alleged the pair had made when they were in custody. When we took the case to the appeal court, the appeal court accepted our submissions. We had a Professor Brian Clifford who gave evidence that said when these four officers claimed that Tommy gave a confession, it was 24 words that they noted down in their notebook, and those words were identical in four notebooks. I only wanted the Van Windy's shot out. The fire at Fat Boys was a frightener which went too far. And this professor said that that's impossible to do. Even if you were a trained actor, you would have a certain amount of recall. But immediately after the event, he said that maybe one or two would write it down exactly the same way, but not the number of police officers who were involved. Joe Steele's statement was also scrutinised. Then we come to, I'm no the one that lit the match. Now this was said in the back of a police car with four police officers in the car. One police officer admitted to writing it down at the time. So he had a police officer here, police officer there, one in the passenger seat and one in the driver's seat, and one police officer wrote that down turned out to be the one who was driving. The linguistics expert had cast out the last key piece of evidence against Campbell and Steele. Good evening. 16 years behind bars for a murder they didn't commit. Thomas Campbell and Joseph Steele are free men tonight after their convictions for the murder of six members of the Doyle family were quashed. 20 years after being jailed for life for murder, Thomas T.C. Campbell heard the words he and his co-defendant Joe Steele had dreamed of. Lord Gill, the Lord Justice Clerk of the Edinburgh Appeal Court, declared, your convictions are quashed and you are free to go. There's no jubilation, there's no happiness, because I feel that there is only the losers in this case. Everybody has lost, the Doyle family has lost their family, we've lost our lives in prison, and, uh, and for 20 years justice has lost. Um, but I was delighted for the guys, I was delighted for their families. Uh, but there's no real closure because there's not been any further investigation into the case, and I think that's a disgrace in a lot of ways. Immediately after the verdict, it was clear an action's now been considered against Strathclyde Police. The term that will be used to describe this case will be a miscarriage of justice, but we think it's a lot more than that. It was a malicious prosecution by Strathclyde Police, and they should answer for it. And so at the end, when we succeeded with Tommy's appeal, I called for a public inquiry and said that this was an injustice, an innocent man had been framed, but also that the killers of um, the Doyle family were still at large and they should be prosecuted. This has been Scotland's longest, most complex miscarriage of justice appeal, attracting massive media attention, an exhausting roller coaster for the men and their families, and what must be a prolonged agony for the Doyle family. And to this day, I think it's very sad that as far as our criminal justice system is concerned, that there hasn't been an inquiry because if Tommy Campbell wasn't guilty of the murder, Joe Steele wasn't guilty of the murder, then quite clearly there are people out there who were responsible, but also there are family members of the Doyle family who never saw justice. <laughs>